Double. Bird fights Kareem. Slings the elbow, and now is yelling at Larry Bird. Jaw to jaw. I wonder if anybody ever asked Kareem what he said in that exact moment. It kind of looked like he said, if you ask me, my opinion, I'm going to give it anyway. I already started. <laughs> my bad. But it kind of looked like to me that he said, y'all been following this whole time. Y'all been this, y'all been following us and hacking us this whole time. It looked like he said something that, and then he started probably saying, what you going to do? What you going to do, Larry? Larry, you know, you know, people like to put the emphasis on Larry, on the L when they saying Larry when they mad. What you going to do, Larry? Larry? <laughs>
Mm. It was so much fun playing against him because he talked so much shit. He hit you with, you, you, you jump high, but you don't jump that high. You can't get this. <laughs> he hit you with, listen, guys, don't, don't worry about the play. I'm going to go right over here, catch it, and shoot it in y'all face. Ain't any damn thing y'all can do about it. And he did it. And he did it. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember talking about, yeah, he talked a whole lot of shit, but I guess it ain't shit talking if you backing, backing it up. It up. Yeah, I'm just and talking. he was backing it up. But before Larry Bird could trash talk the Lakers, he had to trash talk his own teammates for how badly they played the game before. The 84 finals provided us with so much fodder because it was anticipated, it was five years in before Larry and Magic finally had a, a, right. a, a confrontation. And the way that series unfolded, the Lakers carry a bury him and Boston game one and the Celtics and only pull out game two with Gerald Henderson makes the great steal to save the game. 113 to 111. Well, they're going to try and make a steal here and they got their best defensive team in there right now. And, and it goes quickly in now to Magic. Back over to Worthy and it's picked off. Goes to Henderson. He lays it yep. off and It's game. all tied up. A great play by Henderson. They get destroyed in game three. And here's the L.A. break. Cooper and Magic Johnson. The Los Angeles Lakers look like nothing could stop them. The Celtics cannot handle the speed of the Lakers. That's when Larry came up with the we need 12 heart transplants and we played like yep. sissies, quote unquote. This has to be one of the most decisive routes in championship game history. We went in the locker room and Larry made the famous statement that we play like sissies. Bird called his teammates sissy, challenged the entire squad. We got some great players on this team, but we don't have the players with uh, the heart sometimes that we need. Uh, today, when um, you see Magic slapping high fives and uh, guys going behind her back and shooting layups on us all day long, it seems that somebody would try to put a stop to it. But until we get our hearts uh, where they belong, we're in trouble. But yeah, he did Larry know that game four would be one of the most intense physical and hard fought games in NBA playoff history. And it got ugly. The tip controlled by Boston going right to the hoop is Cedric Maxwell and he's fouled. First period, Robert Parrish who's gone inside, misses outside, but there's Larry Bird with the offensive rebound. Anderson is short with it. Cooper getting the break to Johnson. To Rambis. The ball in the Celtics. Harris is blocked by Kareem. Bird gets the layup. Boy, how he knifes his way in. <laughs> uh, in practice, we said that day that the physicality was going to be ramped then up. Then he sniped the ball out. They wanted to play a pretty <laughs> game, and damn it, we were going to make it an ugly game. Now Kareem with McHale guarding feeds Cooper. And the Celtics just have not been able to pick up that cut. Larry Bird backed up Michael Cooper into the photographer's lane. As he got the inbounds pass. A deal by James Orton. And the Lakers open it up again to 11 points. And Casey Jones wants a timeout. In that game, we said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to be so physical that we're going to stop letting the Lakers have layups. We're going to take that away. The comment was, you know, this dunk fest is embarrassing. You know, we got to take somebody out. ML was working on Kevin and the whole time and saying, boy, if I was in that game, I'd go in and I'd just do something. something. Kevin's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of those, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it. Johnson is short with it. Here's Kareem. Outlet to Worthy. Rambis. <laughs> and now let's watch it. Cooper and the Celtics. And now the bench is empty. He was decked by two Celtics so and hit the really floor him out. And both benches have emptied. And you knew this was going to happen. You could see it coming. T tell us all, when he clotheslined you like that, what was on your mind? Well, first of all, it was survival. <laughs> I mean, because the last thing I kind of saw... Was your feet in the I, air? Was, yeah, it was my foot. It looked yeah. like it almost hit the rim. Yeah. So I'm coming down. So I got up. And I saw Kevin McHale, and I'm just going to go run and jump and throw a fist as hard as I can. Just, just wring his neck out there, you know, do whatever I could to get back at him. Because that's just, 
It's not a basketball play. Right. You know, it was an unfortunate incident. It was just a case of two people running in opposite directions, and I reached out to grab him like this, and he was running so doggone fast that my arm just kept going. I couldn't get my other hand around him to grab him. You know, I did try to grab him. I've <laughs> said this before. If there's anybody on that team I wouldn't want to hurt, it's Kurt. You see it. I saw it. In, in my mind, that was as flagrant a foul as, as I've ever seen. The funny thing about that whole uh, episode was that... Uh, you know, I just go to the free throw line and uh, shoot my two free throws. <laughs> and the yeah, game goes yeah, out. right. No, no replay, no ejections, no fines, no nothing. You just go back and play. Yeah. Did y'all hear? Y'all think Kevin McHale really was just running in a certain opposite direction and put his arm out and try to grab him? Because it looked like the man was lying to me. <laughs> I look, if there's one thing I know from watching the Danny Ainge documentaries, that boy Kevin McHale knew how to tell a good story. <laughs> hey, drop some in the comments if y'all think that was truly was an accident or Kevin McHale was really trying to take him out. I mean, we already heard uh, Maxwell basically give us the answer, but I want I want to know that y'all really believe Kevin McHale when he just told us that story. <laughs> Hear that? No instant replays, no ejections, no fines. They just settled it on the court. Don't you love that, that there was a physical play in a game? that is a signature play now that slam dunk and i love the animosity there shouldn't the physicality in the nba should be a lot more than it is at sports fitness club of la when you can't catch something you you got to knock it down to slow it down and that's what they did and um, just all hell broke loose kareem double bird fights kareem Swings the elbow, and now is yelling at Larry Bird. Jaw to jaw. I wonder if anybody ever asked Kareem what he said in that exact moment. It kind of looked like he said, if you ask me, my opinion, I'm going to give it anyway. I already started. <laughs> my bad. But it kind of looked like to me that he said, y'all been following this whole time. Y'all been this, y'all been following us and hacking us this whole time. It looked like he said something that, and then he started probably saying, what you going to do? What you going to do, Larry? Larry, you know, you know, people like to put the emphasis on Larry, on the L when they saying Larry when they mad. What you going to do, Larry? Larry? <laughs> hey, man, what do y'all think Kareem Abdul said in that moment? Because, I mean, in my opinion, I kind of feel like he said, y'all been following us this whole time. Y'all knocked my dude out the air. What y'all going to do? What you going to do, Larry? What you going to do? But no, yeah, hey man, look, if you've still been here this far, man, make sure you send a likes up on this video so everybody can come tune into this, man, because I'm highly curious what everybody think. Thank you, too, for uh, hitting that subscribe button. I know you did it. I know you did it. <laughs> and they better pull him apart. Bird and Kareem fighting for the rebound. And, and Kareem hit him with an elbow, and he's upset. Now Bird... Yeah, look, if y'all ain't noticed, man, he, he about to throw the ball at Larry, man. I don't even know if y'all see that. He's about to throw the ball at Larry. This is him, boom, he elbows Larry. Elbow now, look at the ball. Look how he cocked the ball back. He's about ready to throw the ball at Larry after he didn't elbow him. Kareem was really out of his mind, body, and soul right there in there. Hey, look, I know it's a physical game and everything, and by point at this point, you know, they're probably tired of being fouled by all these different people, but... He, he looked like right now, it kind of looked like he had some hatred in his heart for Larry Bird. Knowing that Larry Bird was that contender. And uh, everybody had to, you know, face him and deal with whatever uh, chaos he dished out to him. So, or I would say, I should say havoc he dished out to him. But, uh, yeah, you can see right there, he got the ball cocked back. He elbows Larry, and then he's the one throwing the whole temper tantrum. I mean, shout out to Kareem Abdul for being a great Hall, Hall of Famer. Um, great basketball player. But, yeah, I just want to point that out. You, you look, man, you, you're doing too much. That's what I'm really trying to point out. He's upset. Now, Bird over there saying, why did you hit me? And okay. Kareem saying, listen, pal, here's off my back. He said F you. Larry sure. Bird was hit in that jaw. And I guess uh, Kareem drew a little F you. blood. You were the why did he walk up out of right this corner. game? You think about right. it. He would have been thrown he out of the F game you. for the elbow. Kevin McHale would have been out of the game. So the new NBA, if you put this tape right now and make some of these guys watch the NBA, who are in the NBA right now, watch this and they go, oh my God, this was grown ass man basketball. And after that, Larry Bird got his revenge in one of the most iconic playoff games in NBA history. And he did it 
while giving the Lakers a master class in the art of trash talk. The dude would just tell you where he's going, shoot it in your face, talk shit to you, and run back down the floor. From outside. It's up to four once again with 134 remaining. Here's Bird, long range over Cooper, and the net didn't even tumble. And he did that to us in the finals. He was like, guys, don't worry about it. I'm going to go right over here to the corner. I'm going to catch the ball. I'm going to shoot it, and ain't shit y'all can do about it. You get a technical. The tip controlled by the Celtics. Here's Bird going for three, and he has it <laughs> to take this lead. McHale misses. Bird goes up, and is fouled. Larry Bird is fouled. Kareem is upset. It's been a common scene tonight here in game number four. And basketball to me is a psychological game. It's a game that you get into somebody else's head. And you get into somebody else's head because you can talk them out of their game. If you're a real player, you don't let nobody talk you out of the game. You just go, okay, all right. I'll, I'll... 21 points, 20 rebounds. That is one crazy double-double. See you in about two minutes, brother. Don't worry about it. Our reaction was too personal. We should have reacted as a team on the court. We tried to deal with it personally and individually, and uh, that uh, that didn't work for us. Magic with seven, with six. Magic takes the ball, and they throw Magic throws Look it away. Look at this. Three seconds, intercepted by Parrish. Magic threw it right to Parrish. Tragic. Tragic Johnson's what, this is what we called him then, because he made a couple of bad plays. 35 seconds remain. We're in overtime. Tied at 123. He misses the first. Johnson misses them both. Bird the rebound. And the Celtics want a timeout. And with the score tied up, with 34 seconds to go in overtime, wow. Larry Bird gives us one of the signature moments of his entire career. Dennis, he told me this one story. <laughs> we were playing, I guess it was in 84, 85, one of the series, but Casey Jones was drawing up a play. And Larry was kind of like watching, watching, and then finally Larry said, hey, coach, give me the fucking ball to everybody get out the way. <laughs> I love that story because that's <laughs> dominance there. That's some, that's some shit yeah. only great ones say. We're in overtime, tied at 123. Casey drawn up the play for coming out of the huddle, and Larry turned and said, uh, you guys want to win the game? Just give me the ball to get out of the way. <laughs> but here's Henderson with it. 18 on the shot clock. I think the Celtics will use most oh, of the clock here. Nearly a steal by Worthy. Dennis Johnson with Cooper all over him. He can't do a thing. Burr turnaround hits. And the Boston Celtics have even this NBA World Championship Series. At that was a big shot. Big shot, Larry. I'm letting y'all see my last reel. I want to go back and point out the fact that no matter how hard he was working for that, and he didn't even have no real time to really, like, set up a good shot. He just went straight forward because he just really had that confidence. But look how hard he was working for it. 18 on the shot clock. I think the Celtics will use most of the clock here. Nearly a Magic steal by Worthy. Dennis Johnson with Cooper all over him. Toe -to -toe he can't Magic. do a thing. Just turn it around, fade away, hits. knock it down. Crazy. And the Boston Celtics have even this Big NBA Shalane. World Championship Series at two games apiece. And those who are writing the obituary can just pause. He was just one of those guys that he just had it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He yeah, had I it, so much, and yeah. I saw it in college, and obviously saw it a whole lot closer mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when we get a chance yeah. to play against the Celtics. He was. The biggest trash talker back in the day, but he would back it up. The Celtics won that series, which was Larry Bird's second championship in five years. And at that moment, Magic Johnson understood who was really the best basketball player in the sport. Will have been on winning teams in six of those seven years. Is Larry Bird, in your mind, the greatest player in the game today? But no question he's the best playing right now. He does so many things. He shoots inside, he shoots outside. He can pass, he can rebound. And his, I think people misunderstand Larry because his awareness and smarts of the game is what makes him, not everything else that he does, but his, uh, just as smart of the game, knowing what to do at what time of the game. And as far as Kareem is concerned, I think it's safe to say that he learned his lesson because <laughs> after that, Kareem never disrespected Larry Bird 
ever again. Who was the best player you played against? The best guy I played against might have been, uh, you know, Larry Bird. The chubby white guy, he <laughs> wore us out, man. <laughs> you know? Because this muscle here, the one between his ears, yeah, that was his best, you know, because he, he made the three-pointers and he had assists and rebounded, steals. He was always at the right place at the right time on the court. You know, one of the great players, I, you know, I, I had the opportunity to play against. Wow. Many players. I don't know what y'all got to say about that, but I'm pretty sure we all going to agree that Larry Bird definitely is the best player of all time. Uh, just to be, you know, clear here, again, I've said it plenty of times, you know, Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan come in with their athleticism, their speed, the way they can jump and, you know, have some sort of hang time, um, you know, just all unique in their own ways. It just doesn't really top the fact of the matter that Larry Bird couldn't do any of that and carried his team to three win, three championships, MVP um, multiple times, uh, defensive player of the year. Uh, winning the three-point contest three times, back to back to back, uh, and just being overall in general uh, a leader on his team that just nobody has anything bad to say about him. Uh, and another thing I want to point out is the fact that no matter that, you know, even the people that he went up against, when they sit down after their adrenaline is now rushing and we get off the basketball court, because you know this as a hooper, when you play – I'm not going to tell you better than me. I'm about to give you everything I got. And then when the game is over, I probably still won't tell you. Maybe a few weeks from then, I'll be like, man, you got me. But I, I'm going to get you next time. When we're talking about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, great, Hall of Famer. My, Magic Johnson, the, the person that people say are better than Larry Bird, a Hall of Famer. Um, and the, the list goes on. They're paying homage to a guy that they know and played against and witnessed with their own two eyes. And they're letting them, they're just paying homage to Larry Bird and they're saying things like, yeah, he's the greatest player to this day. That's what Magic said. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar said, chubby white guy gave me, gave me hell. Basically straight up. Like, man, he made us work. That's how you know someone is the greatest. You, when you look at yourself the greatest and can't know, and you feel like there's nothing that you can do to stop me, and then you run across a guy like Larry Bird and you be like, oh, man, you just got to admit it. Shout out to Larry Bird. Shout out to uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Shout out to Magic Johnson. Shout out to Bradley Cooper. Shout out to Kevin McHale. Shout out to all the greats, man, especially the ones that was talked about during this video for sure. Uh, I watched this documentary. Um, so many times, watched the story so many times. I love to hear it over and over again too, just because everybody got their own aspect of how they want to tell the story. But if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen my reaction to the uh quarter rivals, which is basically Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson, their whole upbringing, I did a reaction to that documentary. It's on my channel. Please go check it out. Make sure y'all like the video. Make sure y'all like this video too, man. And then. Uh, drop some in the comments what y'all want to see next because the last video I just did was a full basketball game. Larry Bird versus Michael Jordan, uh, 86 uh, playoffs. And um, that game went to double overtime, double overtime. Michael Jordan had like 63 points. Larry Bird had 34 um, with a double-double. Um, so yeah, check it out, man. Check out the videos. Drop some good stuff. Drop some in the comments. If y'all want me to watch the whole game, of uh, Larry Bird versus uh, the Lakers, I mean, Celtics versus the Lakers uh, in the playoffs, man, let me know. I'll go look that video up, and we can go watch that whole game, and we can look at the fouls and look at the fights and all of that stuff. But in the meantime, I ain't about to talk y'all heads off. Um, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and turn your notification bell on, and we out. Peace. Let's